And last week we talked about how Goliath had four brothers. And what ends up happening in the story of David? He gets older. He gets wiser. He becomes king. And eventually, all the other four giants are dead. But that's not the most important thing. Second Samuel, Samuel verse 22. This might be one of the most important things I will ever teach anyone. Because last week, what, week we what did I tell you? The God who delivered you from that will deliver you from this. Second what I'm about to tell you is the one thing that every single person has missed. I've missed it. And today when I read that, I was like, my God, what is going on? And it starts like this. The Lord is my protector. He is my strong fortress. David praises the Lord. He praises the Lord in 2 Samuel 22. And David did this because God had delivered him from all of his enemies and Saul. David goes ahead and praises God. He thanks him. David survived battles. He defeated all the giants. There was another war with the Philistines. And what ends up happening? Very simple. He praises God. He praises God. And Now, I'm going to say something, and I want you to listen to me and don't get excited. You will kill your giant, but whether you will kill all your giants is dependent on if you praise after the death of each giant. God's fights are his fights. But how can God keep fighting for you if you don't give him praise for winning for you? David runs and praises God and thanks God for everything. The specific thing he says, my God, my rock, the Lord is my fortress, the Lord is my strong tower, the Lord is my stronghold, the Lord is my fighter. David does not at any point say, I am so good. I have fought X, Y, and Z. We have won this, this, and that. No. He praises God. And Now, why is this the most important? Because a lot of people look at me and you say, well, Robert, that is all great and all, but you see, I have a problem. And it's a giant in my life. Talk about how I kill it. So let me help you in this whole situation. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. 
how many of you you've survived something? Okay. How many of you right now you're trying to survive something? Hmm? Okay. Cool. Did you praise God for the thing you survived last time? People didn't raise their hand. Did you give God thanks for the thing you survived last time? Or did you expect God to know that he brought you out of it? After each victory, David thanked God. After our victories, people thank us. Even when God was the one fighting. If you want God to move in your life, Constantly. Praise him. In other words, I tell people all the time, don't forget to thank God. No, no, no. God will bless me. I'm not going to forget. And then you forget. And now you're back to doing everything you had to do to get him to answer you the first time. One of the funniest things is that I saw it with David. David did this one thing. Oh, and it worked. How many of you, you're praying God and you're waiting on him to answer? Okay. You put your hands down. I'm going to ask you something. Don't lie, tell the truth. How many of you didn't praise God the last time he brought you through something? Don't be ashamed. You're solving a problem. Okay. David praises God. And while he is praising God, he says this. This is verse 22. In my trouble, I called to the Lord. I called to my God for help. In his temple, he heard my voice. He listened to my cry for help. This is what's funny. David praised God in the way he wanted God to respond. The next time. The next time. We don't thank God for nothing. He does something good. We say, oh God, thank you, thank you. You guys, you know, I went through this thing. And now I'm out. Oh, so good. Man, good. Amen. You serve God. Amen. That's not praising God. David praised God so specifically. God delivered me from my problems. When I was in trouble, I called on you. You answered. You delivered me. And then what happens the next time? David has problems. He's in trouble. He calls on God. And God does what? He responds. I am not talking about killing a giant. I'm talking about fighting the battle after this one. Not this one. 
the one after this one. That one. Well, how do we do it? It's really simple. I praise God the way I want him to respond next time. Because praise praise Let me explain to you purely what David was doing. David had so many issues. You couldn't count them on your hands. And your toes. But David praised so much. That it didn't matter about how much you prayed. God was somehow always answering him. Some of you are still waiting to hear from God. But you forget one part. You didn't thank God. You didn't praise him. Now hear me. God will deliver you from this. He will deliver you from this thing. You understand me? You're following me. God will deliver you from the thing that you're dealing with now. But you're not dead. You're not dead. If you're dead, raise your hand. Since you're not dead, God can't be finished. If God is not finished, the devil will never leave you alone. Because If the devil was to leave you alone, you would be useless. The story of David literally has two main points. Obey, praise and worship. If there's something going on in your life, stand up. I am not telling you to pray. Because some of you are praying. I am telling you to begin praising God. To be specific, we are not praising God for right now. So, to explain what I mean is the problem you have today. This message is not for that. This message is for the next one. The problem for you today we solved last week. We're talking about the one that follows it. David fought the same people again. And he beat them again. But David praised and told God. This is what was so funny. There's a part in the Bible. Mark, there's a part in the Bible where David says, God, 
My enemies have laid a trap for me. They've planned this for my life. They attempt to do this. That's what he says. He says, if you don't save me, I will perish. David was saying, God, listen to me. Next month, three months from now, five months from now, they will try to throw me out of my house. If I call you, I need you to be quick. You can't be late. David praised so much that it was so forward. You wait for God to do something for now. David was praising for what would God deliver him from next week. Next year, next fight. Let me put it this way. I know. We look for messages and words that can deliver us from the thing that we feel now. Let me help you. Quickly. Because some of you are looking like, but Rob, the thing I have is bad. No, 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 no. In order for you to have a problem, Mark, next week, you have to be there next week. I think you've missed the whole point. I'm talking about your next problem. For you to have a next problem, you must survive this one. I don't... I don't some of you, the devil, you a the devil is tormenting you a little too much. You're addicted to the problem you have now. I'm talking about solving the next battle. The next one, not this one. The next one. The one that's coming. The one that's a problem that you don't even know. Some of you are looking and saying, oh, but, but this one, you don't understand. It's, it's so bad, I can't even tell people. Some of you are I'm trying to say something without saying something. So let me just say, I don't care about your today because you're in today. I care about your tomorrow because I'm confident you'll survive this. What I'm worried about is you forget to praise God in between coming to church is not praising God opening your Bible is not praising God praising God is thanking him Let me explain to you what praising God looks like. According to what David did, praising God looks like it doesn't make sense. Who's the worst dancer here? Raise your hand. You don't know how to dance. Who's the worst one? Point them out. Hmm? You're the worst dancer. Okay, Rosette, come here. Rosette, come here. Come here. I'm going to show you what praising God actually looks like. Don't touch any instruments. Don't sing. You people sit. Don't clap. Do nothing. Dance. 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 
faster. Shout. 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 This is what David was doing in the middle of nowhere. It didn't make sense. What you're watching was not choreography. There was no beat, there was no song, there was nothing. There was just a man who was shouting, jumping, singing, and then his clothes fell off of him. Now, Jocelyn come up here. Eric come up here. Rosette, stay. No, we're not done. Bacon, come up here. You, you up. Denise, get up here. Peace, get up here. Get, I, get up here. Get, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Yeah, both of you, come on. Come up here. Come stand here. Everyone grab Rosette. My name is Rosette. Do the thing. Go. Go. Come on. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Keep going. Gena maso. Keep going. Gena maso. Keep going. Sigala ngote. Rosette. Rosette is too cool, ida. Sina abo zina. Keep going. Rosette. Why? Zina wogana. Rosette. Now stop. Mumute. What I'm trying to explain to you. Jenga zako banyonyola is that what you're going through looks like that. Right now. Now all of you stand up. Rosette. All of these people all of these people Bonabo, right? Are more than these people. What you're not getting is that that is your now problem. This is the issue of today. That's the issue of tomorrow. I want you to understand how life works. The only thing that can tell the future something is what happened in the past. Stay stand. Grab Rosette. Grab Rosette. Rosette, start praising. What are you doing? Praise. I don't think you understand. I, I want us to put this properly. How did David's clothes fall off of him? Your worship leader, this one's for you. Uh, How did David's clothes fall off him? Of Back then, what would happen is that the king has another guy who checks if the king is dressed properly, if the king is secure. How did his clothes fall off him? Let me explain. 
In the Bible, two people get arrested, they go to jail. They begin to praise at midnight. They praise and their shackles come off. You want to know why? Because God does not like restrictions on the food he eats. The thing he inhabits, he doesn't like things clamping. The clothes on David might have looked nice. But they might have been restricting his movements. Some of you are wondering. When you praise. Things are leaving. The things you want to keep and cover you are leaving. But the simple truth God doesn't like things that restrict how you are. So he gets involved. Ah, I'm coming. I'm coming. When God gets involved, When God gets involved, <laughs> Whoa. when God gets involved, come and stand here. You guys, your next week's problem. But we don't have to wait till next week. Come and touch Rosette. It's okay. You've committed. You've committed. No, 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 no. You've committed. The problem wants to be a problem not next week today. Come. It's okay. Why are you walking backwards? The person you want to bother is here. You guys aren't following what I'm saying. David praised in such a way that the only person it, David was not alone when he praised. Hear me. The devil was watching. The devil saw God remove things off the guy. 